preparation mode, you know, for the country life. Some of us I know are probably already there, which is wonderful. Okay, so I will be reading from chapter one, City Living, Not God's Plan. Let us read a word of prayer before we begin. Father, as we humbly come before your throne, we ask their God for this admonition to speak to our hearts as you have prepared us, dear, dear Lord, for this time and you have used your messenger, mighty God, to afford us this message of preparing for country living so that we won't be caught up in all the madness that is going on right now. Lord, we thank you and we give you all the praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So city living, it's not God's plan. Even though, you know, many of us are still here, he allows it, but for his purpose. I know it's time for us to get out of the cities. So this says the world over, cities are becoming hotbeds of vice. On every hand are the sights and sounds of evil. Everywhere are enticements to sensuality and dissipation. The tide of corruption and crime is continually swelling. Every day brings the record of violence, robberies, murders, suicides, and crimes unnameable. Life in the cities is false and artificial. The intense passion for money getting, the whirl of excitement and pleasure seeking, the thirst for display, the luxury and extravagance, all are forces that with the great masses of mankind are turning the mind from life's true purpose. They are opening the door to a thousand evils. Upon the youth they have almost irresistibly power. One of the most subtle and dangerous temptations that assails the children and youth in the cities is the love of pleasure. Holidays are numerous. Games and horse racing draw thousands. And the world of excitement and pleasure attracts them away from the sober duties of life. Money that should have been saved for better uses is frittered away for amusements. Through the working of trusts and the results of labor unions and strikes, the conditions of life in the city are constantly becoming more and more difficult. Food prices going up. Serious troubles are, are before us, and for many families, removal from the cities will become a necessity. The physical surroundings in the cities are often a peril to health. The constant liability to, contract, to contact with disease, the prevalence of foul air, impure water, impure food, the crowded, dark, and healthful dwellings are some of the many evils to be met. Well, it's no more to be met. We have met it and living in it. <laughs> it was not God's purpose that people should be crowded into the cities, huddled together in terraces and tenements. In the beginning, he placed our first parents amidst the beautiful sights and songs he desires us to rejoice in today. The more nearly we come into harmony with God's original plan, the more favorable will be our position to secure health of body and mind and soul. But it is, hear me? It is so vital for us to get into the country, you know? And if, if, even if we haven't gone there yet, you know, yeah, we need to start looking somewhere now and we need to start visit there just to get our mind, you know, um, aware of what is right, you know, in tune with nature. And as we see how nature helps us greatly in our health, right? Do you know how nice it is and how calm it is? 
and you're out in the country and you hear the birds and the, the, the cool breeze, the difference with the breeze. Like when we're going home and we're coming off the tour, and when you come off the tour, and by the time we touch into that gorge, there's a difference. The air just change. It's more cool. It, it smells better. It's fresh. It just gives you something different. And then when you're home, it's like no one else is there but you. You're not here with music. There's a you know, the whole load bikes them and all of them somewhere there and that much pollution is there as well. So and it helps our children too. You know, it helps our children, you know, get them out. They want to play, they want to be amongst nature. You teach them how to plant, you teach them how to do certain stuff. You know, that's why I appreciate Sister Tanya and, and, and their and their projects that they have given us. You know, it, it's 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 a good thing, Sister Tanya. Um so my family, let us get into this country living mindset, right? Let us not listen to anyone else, but listen to what the spirit of prophecy says about country living, right? Because we need to get there. We need to be ready. We need to be prepared because a time is coming where, oh, mercy on us. And also if we're caught in it, then hmm, I don't know what's going to happen, but let us be on our and let us be praying for each other in getting into the country. All right? Okay, let us pray. Father, we thank you for this admonition. We thank you, dear God, for our messenger who has you have inspired to help us to get ready and to be ready. Lord, country living is not just an escape. It is it is a it is for character building. It is for us, dear God, to, to stay healthful and right with you and as to the cities. Father, in the name of Jesus, may you help each of us, dear God, to, to get that country property. Or if we, have, if we have already received it, mighty God, to help others you know, to get there and to you know, show them, mighty God, what country living is all about. Father, there's a lot of things that we may not understand or know. But Lord, may you help us accordingly that we will get to that place, Lord, where we will get to know everything, all that we need to know, Lord, so that we can we can move hastily. Thank you so much. Let us all prepare our, ch our children, our families, Lord, for your soon coming. Thank you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Uh -huh.